Good morning. Today is Sunday, January 15th, 2023. I stumbled across an interesting article written by a political scientist named Shirley Le Pen. And the title of the article is Longing to Belong, Needing to be Needed in a World in Need. I will post a link to the article in the uh, description of this video in case you want to read the whole thing. But the article is written um, from the perspective of... um, It's about the millennial generation, Generation Y. And I've already let the cat out of the bag. I am of that generation. And I, I, I guess I'm like the most mature. Uh, uh, Wikipedia and some other sources say um, the millennials started being born born around 1982. Obviously, 18 years uh, of age when you sort of become an adult would have been the year 2000 and. Uh, that's the the millennium. So, um, so some born after me are also part of this generation, but probably none born much before me. I guess that makes sense. I was having a hard time communicating that. So, this is an interesting article, as you probably can ascertain from the title. But there's one paragraph that I uh, was particular particularly struck by that I wanted to share, and then. Contemplate. Millennials experience belonging by seeking to impact the world. Acknowledging both the world's fragility and their own ephemerality, millennials understand the world needs saving and needs to be changed. And for this to happen, the world needs them. Yet, instead of belonging to the world passively, they realize that the world belongs to them as an available platform waiting to be used and on which they must mark their footprints. Create an impact has become a mantra for members of Generation Y, almost perceived as a personal duty. Its non-realization is endured as a deep failure and potentially puts personal identity's construction at stake. So if I'm being absolutely honest, there's a lot in that that rings true for me. The article uh, was written to say the world needs saving and it needs to change. Perhaps I may suggest from my perspective that the world is in change. My sense is that we all feel it. My sense is that some of us find ways within our consciousness to deny it or to not pay attention to it or to avoid it. And sometimes this is manifest as clinging to existing structures that offer a sort of a sense of continuity and safety. But my sense is that all of these structures are being re-articulated. So with that shift in paradigm from the world needs to change to the world is in change, 
And then bringing in the dynamic of our uh, participation to the change as conscious beings. We are manifest as agents of the change. And I totally feel that. Um, the, the teacher, Paul Selig, that I've mentioned before, I remember really distinctly uh, a couple of times in the texts that, that he has channeled, uh, him saying something to the effect of, what you're experiencing now on this plane is a magnitude of change that hasn't been seen for a millennia. And so there's that word, millennia, millennial. And so you can see the connection uh, that I'm trying to make. Here's a political scientist that's observing millennials and suggesting that they find a sense of belonging by impacting the world. And here I am on this channel trying to feel into giving form to that ephemerality that was mentioned. It's no small task. But the one thing that I wanted to add to this um, has to do with how things may change. So sometimes our culture suggests that in order for something to evolve or to be made new or to change, we have to fight against it or push against it or kill it, you know. <laughs> And through my spiritual study, I've become aware of a different paradigm that I've been exploring, testing out in my own experience. And I want to suggest it to you so that you can feel into it and test it in your own experience. And that has to do with the idea that you really can't be opposed to something. So like when you say, I am against war, you're actually contributing to and reinforcing the structure of war in, your, in and through your consciousness. So what is, what is the alternative? The alternative would be accomplishing a consciousness at which or through which or in which war is not present. It, it may not be made manifest. Do you understand that? I think it's a, a quote, there's a quote attributed to the Buddha that says, hatred ceases not with hatred, but with love. And this, I think, is an expression of this idea of not being able to affect change by opposing things that you don't like or agree with, but rather attuning to the ideas that are in agreement with your true nature. So consider that as the human race species, as we all become as love and as peace, many of the phenomena that are outpictured in our world and in our environment that have been informed by past paradigms 
rooted in ideas like fear and lack and separation, those simply won't be there because we have accomplished a level of collective consciousness at which they don't manifest. Please, please comment if you have any questions in response to this. If the language is unclear or confusing, as I've expressed before, one of the intentions I have as I reach out to this environment of YouTube or wherever this may land is to open up a field in which some big ideas may be discussed and contemplated and through which I may communicate um, stuff that I've been contemplating and realizing within myself, but try to open up and connect to others about it through language. And language does weird things. Um, it, it's hard sometimes to, I need to stop saying that. It's so easy to express complex ideas in simple language. That's, that's what I would like to make manifest. So this idea of um, attending to things at different levels of consciousness, you can try out in your own experience. It doesn't have to be only applied to like big picture socio-cultural phenomena. So in some ways it's the same. Like you, if you, um, for example, have an opportunity to be in disagreement or argument, like a battle or a war within the self is the same as a battle or a war or a disagreement with your friends, family members, colleagues, neighbors. So here's what you may try out. And I've experienced this and it's, um, I'm kind of in awe about some of what has happened in my own experience, but return all non-love with love. Rather than getting embroiled and within your own consciousness, joining the battle, realize deeply that the people around you and the one standing in front of you is you. At a certain level of your consciousness, we are all one species, citizens of the same light. And so when you realize that, you'll realize that the only thing to offer that's of any value is love. And love is a causal and a transformative energy. So when it is offered or when you are offered as it or when it becomes you, it can affect change. And so <clears throat> going back to the original quote that inspired this about the millennial generation Perhaps I'm speaking to millennials. I feel you. Hang in there. All right, my hair is kind of weird and still wet. I feel you. I'm with you. Hang in there. We're in this together. And the answer is to support the changes in the times we're in through the realization of love. And that happens in the moment you stand in. All all the time, each moment. Okay. Thank you as always for joining me and for the opportunity to share my ideas. Um, I will close this contemplation for today and look forward to sharing with you again tomorrow. Thank you. <laughs>